Okay, so we're ready to continue our generation of the proof of the correctness of the GCD program. Alright, so I'm going to change the window sizes here a little bit. We have a good idea of what the proof rules are in the uh, axiomatic semantics and make this a little, little wider here. Alright. So we have some pieces and we can start to think about how we can put some of these these pieces together now. All right. So we're going to create the proof tree in a series of phases and in these phases we'll have proof trees and we'll see how we can sort of glue them together. All right. So here's what we want to prove. All right, so this is our main proof tree here that we're going to construct. Let me get rid of this for a bit. All right, so one thing we know is that the post condition that we want to prove is that i is equal to the GCD of n0 and m0, right? And so this is what we have called post. So to save a little space, uh, we'll, we'll do this. Now, if we look at post, post 1 and post 2, right, one thing that we can tell is that post 1 implies post. Right? So we can use the rule of consequence so that we instead want to show that if our precondition holds, we execute GCD program then post one holds. Right? And so the reason we're wanting to do this, this is by rule of consequence, is that we want to get to post two, which says something about M0 and N0. M0, M and N, I'm sorry, as opposed to M0 and N0, right? Our that's what our loop invariant is about, that's what the code is about. So where post here is still saying something about N0 and M0, we really want to get to being able to say something about the variables that are actually changing uh, in, sorry, not changing, the, the variables that are used in the while loop. So, so that's all, all good. I'll tidy this up a bit. And we could then say, okay, let's continue on and do another one of these. All right, where now we realize that, well, it's post two implies post one, and thus we can say we have the precondition holding, run the GCD code, then post two is going to hold. All right, so now we're at the point of wanting to have a proof of this piece here. And so this is a proof tree. We're going to generate it, and we're going to call it TGCD. And so we're going to go create that tree uh, in another place. Uh, you've noticed I've abbreviated pre uh, uh, the precondition with pre here, so we could add that to our list of abbreviations, just so we're keeping track of all these. And this makes our tree a little smaller and easier to see. All right, fill in that a bit, and then maybe push this back out where we started. All right, so that's an ASCII version, uh, not a very pretty tree, but uh, the structure of the tree should be clear here. And now we have this piece that we want to prove. So we're going to grab this and make this the tree P G C D. And now what we're trying to prove is this. All right, so this is now the base of this little tree. And we have to say, all right, what we could do now is think of splitting this up into a few pieces. All right, so we've talked before about 
uh, splitting up the program because of using the rule of sequential composition. So we can have some sort of initialization phase and, and if then else and we have our loop invariant. Right? So if we look ahead to what should happen with our rule of iteration over here, the precondition for the while loop is going to be our loop invariant. And so we have an idea what that's going to be. And we can indicate the structure of how we break this up using the rule of composition. And We'll sort of stack these a little bit, but the intention hopefully is clear. Right, so it's the rule of composition that lets us break up the GCD program into two pieces. Here, the Q that we're putting between the two pieces is going to be our loop invariant. And from this point, we can go off and create uh, the proof trees for these two components, right? So here, for the initialization part, right, this is going to be t init, and the while loop part will create another tree, and this is while. All right. And so we can now think of going off and trying to solve these two pieces, create those two trees, and then we could glue the whole thing together into one large tree if we wanted to, but it's usually easier to sort of do this in phases and have separate trees and indicate uh, at the, the leaf nodes of some trees where another tree would plug in. All right, so we're going to pause again and pick this up in the next video.